starts right now. For every parent, for every citizen in this country, we have to make it clear to every elected official in this country, it's time to act. Chaos as gunfire rings out at an elementary school in Uvalde. People taken to the hospital. More than a dozen children killed. Some parents still searching for answers tonight. I keep asking questions of what's going on and nobody's telling me anything. Nobody's telling me, telling me anything. The gunman now dead as investigators work to uncover a motive. Uh, it is being reported uh, that the subject shot his grandmother right before he went into the school. Some calling for a change to gun laws. Now we have children murdered at school. When are we gonna do something? We look at the impact now being left on many and the ways you can help our neighbors in South Texas. Some who are still fighting for their lives. I don't know what to say, it's, it's, it's sad, it's sad. It is sad. The death toll in the Uvalde school massacre continues to change. Right now it stands at 19 kids to adults. And one of those is Eva Morales, a fourth grade teacher at Robb Elementary. Her aunt saying that she was a teacher with Uvalde CISD for 17 years. The shooting happening in Uvalde, southwest of San Antonio, just before noon today. A gunman opened fire at Robb Elementary. That shooter is also dead tonight. As families are waiting at the Civic Center there in Uvalde for information, some victims were taken to University Hospital here in San Antonio. Our Garrett Berger begins our team coverage tonight at Robb Elementary with new information on the moments before this shooting and the shooter's apparent interaction with law enforcement. Garrett joins us live tonight. Garrett. Well, Steve, Robb Elementary is lit up tonight, surrounded by law enforcement, a crime scene no longer a school. Now the air still heavy with the emotion of the tragedy that unfolded just a few hours ago. We're not even 12 hours away at this point. Texas Rangers are leading the investigation and we talked with DPS about how this all went down. Now DPS Lieutenant says the shooter shot his grandmother at a domestic disturbance. The shooter crashing his car near the school and DPS saying he then exchanged fire with a Uvalde ISD police officer first outside then armed with a long rifle clad in body armor he went into the school shooting everyone in sight other law enforcement arrived and we know of at least two wounded officers a dps lieutenant said a tactical team exchanged fire with the shooter and hit him a neighbor told us at one point she saw what looked like an adult man being carried out the front brought him to the front of the school and a stretcher and they tried to put him put him in one of the police officers cars and they weren't able to so then they tried to put him in the back of a, a fire department truck that has a lift on the back of it so they weren't able to put him there either because all of a sudden here comes an ambulance and they throw him in the police i mean the ambulance and they rush him out of here Well, the neighbor thought that might have been the shooter dps lieutenant says it could have been an injured law enforcement officer and adding to the adding credence to that, as another DPS spokesman said, the shooter was killed inside of the school. Now, DPS said said that the shooter's grandmother had been airlifted to University Hospital. We just received word that she has now been added to the list of a list of deceased. Now, shortly before uh, live in Uvalde, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. Four patients were brought to San Antonio. They're being treated at University Hospital. A nine-year-old is now being treated here. Uh, officials say a 10-year-old girl and a 66-year-old woman are in critical condition. We're told that nine-year-old is in fair condition. Another 10-year-old girl was also taken to University Hospital. She's listed in good condition tonight. Now, we haven't been given an exact number of the of those injured in this shooting. Some were actually taken to Memorial Hospital in Uvalde. And that is where our Stephania Jimenez joins us live tonight. So, Stephania, you've been there for several hours now. What are you learning? You know, first, I'm just going to start with describing what it's like out here right now. It is eerily quiet outside of Uvalde Memorial Hospital. This is where most of the victims were taken to be treated for the injuries, including some of the uh, deceased. And, you know, we got here two hours ago, as you just said, and right across the street from where we're standing right now, I just want my photographer to show you what the lay of the land here is like. There are some benches there that you see. When we got here, there were seven people sitting down 
down on those benches. Three of them came up to me and said that they were family members of one of the children, one of the 19 children who was shot and killed at Robb Elementary School today. Two of those people that we spoke with were grandparents. And you can just tell how hurt they were. They're just trying to make sense of this. They just they just seemed numb. They're trying to kind of piece together what happened. They But they did tell us that their grandson was a 10 year old boy in the fourth grade. And the reason that they were sitting outside is because they were trying to give their daughter, who's the mother of that boy, some space. They told us that she was understandably heartbroken tonight. Now, we also spoke with another man here at the scene. He's a pastor. He told us he's the pastor of that family that we just told you about. And being that he's a man of the cloth, we had to ask him, what is his message for comforting the families of victims tonight? Here's what he told us. We offer hope. There's been many of us that have lost loved ones as well as children. And so we come to offer hope beyond that, but also at the time to really let them know how much we care and that we love them to be our full support for them in every way. The really the way that this community here is handling things. What we're seeing tonight is this community as well as the surrounding communities here really pulling together you know we've been out here since this afternoon and we have seen police officers from different departments going up to each other hugging each other people walking uh, walking uh, along the street hugging each other just giving themselves a little bit of comfort because that's what you need to get through moments like this and speaking of that we know that there there was a small vigil that was held here tonight and there is also going to be another larger community vigil that is going to take place tomorrow. But at this moment, we still don't know how many people are being treated here at Uvalde Memorial Hospital tonight. That is information that we're hoping to get for you in the next few hours. For now, we're live here outside of Uvalde Memorial Hospital. Stephanie Ahimez. All right, thank you, Stephanie. We lost your audio there at the end, but thank you for that report. Now, San Antonio police lending their resources in the intense moments leading up to the capture or the attempted capture of the school shooter. SAPD did send over its Eagle helicopter and bomb squad to help out Uvalde police today, along with local crime scene investigators. They're working closely with the Texas Rangers here to turn over anything to help us uncover why this tragedy happened. Just like most of us who have children, the first thing we do when we go home is we hug our children. I did that tonight. Um, and we just have to remember that um, there's a whole community of people over there that, that are, are trying to do that, and many cannot. And um, we have to give uh, folks the, the grace and understanding to know where they are in the mourning process. Is San Antonio certainly trying to wrap its arms around Uvalde and all the people down there that are hurting. Mayor Nuremberg asking San Antonio residents to fly their flags at half staff to honor the victims and the families affected by this mass shooting and more on how San Antonio has turned out in a big way coming up a little bit later in the show. Our coverage of the massacre at Robb Elementary now continues, though. And the night team's Lee Waldman is at the Civic Center there in Uvalde. It has become an area that really has been a makeshift meeting place, a place for people to mourn together and to simply to be together yes. uh, in the hours since this happened. And Lee, we're actually learning another gut-wrenching detail of all of this. We understand that parents there are being asked to give DNA to help in what process? The, the DNA that's being collected by these families who were occupying this lawn behind me, uh, it's being used for the identification process, which is just another detail that just takes your, takes your breath away with this whole situation here. This Civic Center, we've been here since uh, just after 2 o'clock this afternoon, and it has transformed during that time in the eight hours that we have been here. At first, it was a reunification center, families heading here to pick up their children. It was then turned into a notification center. So many of these families that were sitting here before were desperately waiting for any information that they could get on their children. They'd say they didn't know where their children were. And unfortunately, just before we came on, you could hear screams and crying inside of the Civic Center all the way out here nearly on the street. Um, unfortunately, it seems like some families are getting that news they didn't want to receive this evening. Uh, this has been happening throughout the
on to one another, carrying them out to their car as they cried, as they talked on the phone, as they held on to others. I spoke with two fathers this evening and both had a very similar story for us. They're fathers of 10 year old girls. One of their daughters is named Annabelle. The others is a Marie. Neither had any information about where their daughters were or even if they were okay. They say that has been the worst part of all of this. These parents are not here and they have their kid and their kid got out of school. No, if my kid was with me, I'd be at home right now. I'm here because my daughter was involved in the incident and something happened. We don't know her status. I'm already sick. I'm already sick to my stomach, you know what? I don't want to know nothing bad, you know what? Bad it should be, be something bad for me, not, not my girl. And obviously we're giving those two fathers their space tonight. We didn't want to, to try it and talk to them again, but we did see one of those fathers go into this center um, shortly after they, they came out holding their loved ones and they were crying. And that just seems to be the repeated story of what's happening here as families go inside, they give that DNA sample, and then a lot of them are just getting the worst news you could ever imagine. It is so eerily quiet, except for the sounds of other reporters, other vehicles here, and occasionally the sounds of screaming, crying moms and dads who desperately want their children back. Live in Evaldi, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Lee, when you hear that father say, not my girl, that just, that hits you. Thank you, Lee. Uh, we now know the identity of one of the 19 children killed at Robb Elementary. We're going to focus on the victims, the lives lost here more than that gunman who is a coward in all of this. ABC News confirms that 10 year old Xavier Lopez was a fourth grader at the school who was killed. A family member telling ABC News tonight that his mother was there for an award ceremony earlier in the day. 10 year old Xavier Lopez lost today in the shooting in Uvalde. We continue to follow this developing story online as well. Our coverage does not end here. Coming up, we're going to take a look at the impact the shooting is having and how one resource is helping take care of a community's mental health. We're also going to take a look at some of the vigils happening tonight. We're also going to hear from the president who spoke to the nation tonight about what happened in Uvalde. But first. First, let's take a look outside with live cam right now. We are keeping an eye on the weather this evening. San Antonio expecting rain overnight. Let's get right to meteorologist Sarah Spivey with the latest. We've got some storms out there to talk about, Sarah. That's right, Myra. You know, it's quiet right now in San Antonio, but we are under a severe thunderstorm watch until 3 a.m. Storms are going to move through that could produce damaging wind gusts and even some hail. You can see those storms right now across the hill country, damaging wind gusts across Gillespie, Blanco, Kerr, and Kendall County, as well as some hail across parts of Edwards County. Coming up, I'm going to give you a detailed look at the radar here. We're going to look at those storms in depth, but in San Antonio, here's what you should plan for. A line of storms from midnight to seven in the morning, frequent lightning, gusty winds, heavy downpours, some power outages. It's going to be noisy, widespread rainfall of half an inch to an inch and a half with pockets of two plus inches of rain. Here's what we're watching out for and what we're going to be with you in the overnight hours for severe wind gusts of potentially 70 miles per hour, perhaps quarter sized hail or slightly larger and even some flooding issues. An in depth look at the radar. I'll be tracking those storms coming up in just a few. Steve. Thank you, Sarah. Still ahead on the night beat, President Joe Biden reacting to today's massacre at that school, Robb Elementary in Uvalde. We're going to hear from him. We're also going to share the ways you can help, the ways we all can help this community heal. Coming up. New images into the case at 12 newsroom tonight coming in from Uvalde, a community now leaning on their faith after a massacre at that elementary school in Uvalde. A group of people gathered in a nearby church to pray around a table tonight. You have to believe that this is being repeated in many homes and churches around South Texas this evening. We know several victims in today's shooting are still in the hospital tonight. A lot of people praying as they fight for their lives. Meantime, crowds of people have showed up to donate blood following today's shooting. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says 600 donors came in today. There was a two hour wait at one point this evening. Tomorrow's emergency blood drive in Uvalde has all the appointments filled, but the need is still there. 
blood, of course, has a shelf life. So just use your phone to scan the QR code on your screen to learn more because days of donations ahead are certainly needed. You can also schedule a donation, a donation closer to home as well. We have all this information on KSAT.com. New tonight, Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sierra also reacting to today's shooting. As a matter of fact, he traveled to Uvalde today for those that were hurting. And the night team's John Paul Barajas in Uvalde, where the Archbishop is at Sacred Heart Roman Catholic Church tonight. John Paul. Steve, Myra, uh, they just wrapped up a very emotional mass, and fittingly so. It's been a very emotional day, not just here in Uvalde, but across Texas, across the country. The Archbishop, as you mentioned, traveled down here to Uvalde. He was at the Civic Center with parents looking for their children. He was at the hospital speaking to parents who had just gotten the news that their child had been either hit by gunfire or even worse, that their child wasn't going to be coming home. He talked to me about those moments and walked me through those moments saying how devastating and gut-wrenching, uh, heartbreaking are all adjectives in terms you could use to describe those moments as those parents got those horrible words that nobody ever should hear in their life. Uh, here at the Sacred uh, Heart Church, he gave an emotional mass. You saw him blessing people. He spoke to one woman who went up to the altar who said she was actually transporting children from the school to the hospitals and just he could tell that she was shaken. Uh, he's obviously still um, keeping composure, but you can tell and a little bit of shakiness of just how much devastation that he's seen and tried to pray over here. He's blessed so many people. Uh, just take a listen to what he said briefly to us just a few moments ago. This is a, an examination of conscience. What have not we done to build up humanity? He heard him say it there. Uh, he said his main message in this mass was that we not need to build up buildings and business. We need to build up humanity. We need to be there for each other. We need to take pride in being good people. He said innocent children were taken from us today, but that innocent people will get us through these difficult times. He will be here tomorrow at the Civic Center, at the hospital, praying and also uh, helping people through the grieving process. He doesn't know how long his stay will be because, as we all know, the grieving process can vary for so many. And with something like this at this magnitude, it could take lots of time. But he says he's here for the people you value and he's here and he wants to spread love and prayer and just bless them. Uh, we'll have more from the Archbishop later in the newscast. Steve, Myra. All right, thank you, John Paul. Meantime, news of today's shooting, not just rocking South Texas, but this entire country. President Joe Biden speaking from the White House this evening, calling for the need to do more in terms of gun reform. The president asking from the podium repeatedly, why do these shootings happen so frequently in America? He says other countries, they have mental health issues, domestic violence as well, what he described as lost individuals, but senseless acts of gun violence are most prevalent here in the U.S. To lose a child is like having a piece of your soul ripped away. There's a hollowness in your chest. You feel like you're being sucked into it never going to be able to get out. Those comments and this shooting coming just over a week after 10 people were killed in a New York grocery store. Watching the images of this horrific tragedy unfold could cause secondary trauma for some in our community. One mental health specialist encouraging parents to limit how much coverage they and their children are exposed to because you know we talked about it throughout the day how do you explain something like this to a young child it is incredibly difficult the night team's patty santos is live with more on the signs that we should be looking for and patty it's important to know that there are people to help in this incredibly difficult task that so many parents have ahead of them right now that's right. And as we're learning more information, we want to find out more. We're glued to our phones, to the TV, to the radio. It is getting so close to our community here that it can really be a trigger for some of us and cause a secondary trauma. Take a listen. Re-traumatization for many who've been through either a similar experience or something, some type of trauma. Um, this can be a very difficult time for them as well, whether it's children or adults. So it's important to also be looking out for your own self-care. 
Mary Beth Fisk with the Ecumenical Center says adults need to do a lot of listening to their kids tonight. What are their fears as they hear about what is happening? Help you reassure them that they are safe and look for signs of anxiety, not sleeping well, overeating or not eating enough. These are also signs that you should look for on yourself. Tonight, many mental health specialist therapists trained to, in trauma care are headed to Uvalde to support that community. Those who live close to that community community are encouraged to reach out to a professional to talk about their emotions in a healthy way. That we know the need won't stop today. The need will be something that's consistent throughout the many weeks to come. So working alongside the local mental health authorities and others who are from the community, we just want to be there to help. And if you feel like you need to talk to someone, the Ecumenical Center is here. That number is 210-616-0885. Or if you're a trained therapist in trauma care, your knowledge, your expertise might also be helpful. You can reach that same number, maybe help out our community as well. Live at the Ecumenical Center, Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. All right, Patty, and speaking of opportunities to get help, a reminder of those for those of you in Uvalde, there is an opportunity to talk with grief counselors tomorrow morning. This is happening at the Willie de Leon Civic Center at 300 Main Street. It opens up at 8 a.m., those services for teachers and staff from Robb Elementary. Then at 10 a.m., those services are open to anyone else who is looking for someone to speak with. There at the Civic Center and the superintendent of Uvalde schools saying they will continue to have these counseling sessions as long as is necessary. You still ahead on the night beat. We're keeping an eye on the election results coming in. We're going to take a look at some of those races coming up and weather also a big story for us this evening. Overnight rain expected some storms out there right now. We're checking in with meteorologist Sarah Spivey in just a few minutes. Look outside with live cam tonight. We have got plenty of things to keep our eyes on in terms of the weather out there. The possibility of severe weather, that's what we're really watching. Sarah. Yeah, we need the rain, we don't need the storms. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're going to get some rain tonight. That's the good news. The not so great news is we are going to have to be on the lookout for damaging wind gusts and even some quarter size hail possibly a little larger than quarter sized hail. Now it's not going to rain in San Antonio for another hour, hour and a half. But as you can see across the hill country in the Edwards Plateau, there is a line of thunderstorms that is slowly starting to push south. Now in general, the individual storms themselves are moving to the east and you can see that we do have some severe thunderstorm warnings for areas in Gillespie, Blanco, Kendall County. This particular warning is in effect until 1045. Anywhere you see See these orange polygons, you need to be inside and away from windows if you're in these orange polygons. One area that is experiencing a severe thunderstorm warning right now is Kerr County. This includes Hunt, Ingram, and uh, just west of Kerrville. Uh, the rain is on the way there to those areas, and this particular storm could contain up to quarter sized hail. What we can do is we can look at the threats here uh, from this storm, and you'll be able to see anywhere you see these purples, that's where we could have some quarter sized hail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and track this storm. It's moving east at about 30 miles per hour. So if it holds together, it'll be in the Kerrville area by about 11 p.m. Again, here in San Antonio, we're going to be seeing these showers and storms moving in closer to 1130 midnight. But there are some storms out to the west that are producing slightly larger hail, one in Edwards County county as well. But the biggest thing that we're going to be concerned about this evening, in addition to a few pockets of quarter sized hail here and there is really damaging wind gusts in Rock Springs. We've already seen wind gusts of up to uh, about 52 miles per hour and up in uh, Gillespie County close to Lukenbach Fredericksburg. That particular storm has already shown indications of producing up to 70 mile per hour wind gusts where that storm is bowing 
coming out a bit. So again, it's going to be another hour, hour and a half before we see the showers and storms in San Antonio. But really, these are producing a lot of rain as well, and that is the good news. Here's a look at the bigger picture itself. A cool front is pushing through South Central Texas, and even that leading edge that I was just showing you on the radar, look behind it. There's plenty of rain behind it as well. So with the initial push, that initial line, there's going to be that risk for some severe weather through about three o'clock in the morning. As you can see on the high res future cast, it's right around midnight that we'll start to see the rain really focus around the San Antonio metro area. Then as we headed to two o'clock in the morning, again, some showers and storms ongoing. We'll still have the risk for a few pockets of quarter sized hail, perhaps some gusty wind, definitely frequent lightning, and we're probably going to have some power outages throughout the evening. If you lose power, get the KSAT Weather Authority app. We can go live right to your phone. By 4 a.m., we're going to still have some showers and storms, but the severe weather threat will be diminishing. Early morning commute could be damp in spots, but skies are going to start to clear by mid morning on Wednesday, and it should be fairly cool in the afternoon on Wednesday. So your KSAT 12 hour forecast, severe thunderstorms possible in San Antonio pretty much after midnight through about six o'clock in the morning. And then as we head into the rest of the day tomorrow, it is going to start to clear out and highs will actually only be close to 80 degrees uh, tomorrow in the afternoon. After the chance for storms tonight. We turn off the tap. It's going to be dry and hot into Memorial Day weekend. Highs will be in the mid to upper 90s. Again, we're going to be on that case out weather authority app going live right to your phone. Steve Myra. All right, thank you, Sarah. Our coverage on the massacre at that elementary school in Uvalde continues in this hour long edition of the night beat coming up how a local school district is reacting and how San Antonio is holding its own vigil tonight. And we are also keeping an eye on tonight's election results. We'll bring you some of the hottest races coming up next on the Night Beat.